Hi everybody, welcome to another ICDEL EWF arcade repair video. A few years ago I started collecting and repairing a few arcade game PCB that I used to play during the late 70s and early 80s. The PCB you see in this picture is a Galaga bootleg, or in other words a probably unauthorized clone of the original game. Since I have already restored another identical PCB set, I don't need another one, so I plan to repair this PCB set and try to sell it or swap it with one of the other arcade PCBs I'm looking for. The first obvious issue is a missing PCB daughter board that was plugged in the empty socket in the main EPROMS row. The red wire was also connected to the missing daughter board. Here is an image of the original daughter board of my other game PCB. It's just made with six regular 74LS TTL ICs. Another very minor issue is a missing spacer and screw between the CPU and the video PCBs. Also, most of these bootleg PCBs have a few wires that bring the video output signals from the video PCB to the main interface connector on the CPU PCB. Since my test setup connects directly to the video PCB connector, I will remove these wires once I'm ready to power up the board. When troubleshooting and repairing the previous game board, I needed to reverse engineer most of the CPU board schematic. This arcade game uses three Z80 CPUs plus another 8-bit CPU controlling the game inputs and generating the ship explosion sound. In this bootleg copy, the fourth 8-bit CPU has been replaced with another Z80 processor. Now, the three main Z80 CPUs access a shared bus using some sort of clocked bus transceiver. In this bootleg copy, these bus transceivers are made with regular TTL ICs and are but the first one are just scattered on the main CPU board. However, the first Z80 synchronous transceiver was put on a separate daughter board PCB plugged into a 28-pin socket located at U4F position. This is my reverse engineered schematic of the daughter board. Of course, I could just make an exact copy of it using the same ICs as in the original design. However, that would be as big as the original or slightly smaller if I used all SMD components. In the end, I instead decided to implement all the logic into a single small CPLD and that was surely the cheapest option in 2021 when I started this repair project. Unfortunately now, the ATF-1502 is orderable only with about one year delay, so I would probably have used a couple of old PAL or GAL ICs to implement all the logic if I started the project in 2022, but the PCB will get bigger of course. Anyway, since I had already a few ATF-1502 ordered previously, I just used those ones and designed the smallest possible PCB. It fits exactly into the 28-pin socket footprint, so it won't even cover the nearby EPROMs like the original daughter board does. This could be helpful if I need to probe some EPROM pins during the board troubleshooting. After a few weeks, I received the PCB ready to be populated. Now I can test a prototype of this replacement on my working game board. Here is an assembled PCB that I programmed with my first revision code. I still need to solder the pins on this one. So now I can test the new daughter board on my working game PCB. But first I'm using the original daughter board to make sure that everything is still working fine. I'm now going to substitute the original daughter board with my replacement one. Well, the game doesn't even start, so there is something wrong I need to find and correct. So I started troubleshooting my own work, checking all signals activity, and looking for any clue on what is not working correctly.
To make a long story short, I found two issues on the original couple implementation of the logic daughter board. The first one was really trivial. Let's examine this picture taken from the couple language manual. We see that by convention, all the enable and synchronous reset and set logic are active high. This is of course independent on the actual device that we'll use to implement our design. And of course, I knew this fact since this isn't the first design I make with this description language. However, when we translate a real TTL circuit to a couple design, we must watch for the actual device enabled pin polarities. Here, for example, we can see that both the LS373 and the LS244 have active low enabled pins that is shown with a small circle at the end of the pins. Similarly, the 74LS74 reset and set pins are active low, so when translating this design to couple, we need to invert the final level on the enable logics and on the set and reset logics, which is something I forgot to do in the first iteration of my design. The second issue was more subtle and took longer to identify. One feature of the couple language are the pin nodes that are registered signals that we don't need to expose to any output pin, as we are only going to use them to create the needed external signals. In fact, no LS74 output goes directly to any of the interface pins. So, in this case, I used two pin nodes to implement the two synchronous flip-flops of the S74 LS74, but for some reason, I had assumed I needed to force the output enable of the nodes flip-flops to one. That was not needed and in fact it even caused a big issue. First of all, all pin node outputs are always usable without an explicit output enable. Second, the pin node declaration makes the compiler choose any free registered structure to allocate our latch or flip-flop. For example, on any macro cell used for an input pin where the local registered element is not used. By forcing the output enable logic to one, the external pin becomes an output, not the internal flip-flop structure. So in my case, one input pin was erroneously behaving as an output until I corrected the pin node part of the design to never use the .oe extension. So in this part of the final couple design, we can see the relevant comments to remind us of both the issues. So I programmed the CPLD with a new revised code. Now the input signal looks good. And the game board is starting fine. I'll take now some time playing the game to check that everything works as expected. The replacement motherboard didn't show any problem during a few hours of testing, so it is now time to install it on the game PCB I want to repair. Before powering on, however, I took some time to restore the tin layer on the edge connector. Unfortunately, this other game set looks in very bad shape. All we have is a random image that's even missing the video sync signal. The repair of this board was quite complex and it will be shown in a future video. That's all for now. I hope this was interesting and you learned something. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.